Money FM 89.3, best of weekends. Georgette Chen. At home in the world, the first major retrospective of the artist's work in two decades now at the National Gallery in Singapore. One of Singapore's greatest artists. Just opened yesterday. We have got on the show with us right now, Russell is with us, Russell Storer, the Director of Curatorial and Collections at the National Gallery, to tell us about this. Russell, good morning. Welcome to Money FM Weekend Mornings. How is this morning. new exhibit for Georgette Chen? I mean, it's a beautiful exhibition. It actually opens next Friday to the public, and it'll be running till September the 26th next year, so it's quite a long exhibition. Um, but as you say, it's the first retrospective of Georgette Chen's work since 1997. So over 20 years, and it follows her life from her early studies in France, um, all through you know her life um, moving around the world in China, and then to Singapore. Uh, so it really covers this extraordinary life, this extraordinary work of one of the most influential artists in Singapore's history. You know, she- Russell, for those that may not be familiar with her, why is she so important to Singapore and to art here? She is part of that generation of artists who, you know, came from China and then moved to Singapore, you know, in the sort of first half of the 20th century and really brought this very new form of kind of hybrid kind of art making. So they'd studied Chinese art, they'd studied Western art, and they they created this kind of fusion, which was sort of referred to as the Nanyang style. Mm. And the Nanyang Academy of Fine Arts was a hub for a number of these artists. A lot of them taught there. And Georgette Chen taught there for over 30 years. So she was also a very influential teacher and mentor to generations of artists in Singapore, including major figures like Thomas Yeo and Ng Eng Teng. Mm. And, and Russell, following up from that, I know you're focusing more broadly on, on women in arts. I mean, from, a, from a, a female perspective in a male-dominated world, aside from her art, what she did was extraordinary from a purely feminist point of view to, to establish mm. such an artistic foothold in the early mid part of the 20th century in an industry that was exclusively dominated by men, uh, arguably even more so in Asia, was an extraordinary Mm. achievement, wasn't it? It really was. And what we're trying to really bring out in the exhibition is the dedication she had to being an artist. You know, she really presented herself as an artist. We got some stunning photographs of her sort of, you know, in the studio and, you know, it was really part of her self-identity. And she lived through some of the most you know, turbulent times mm. in history. I mean, she went through the revolution in China. She lived through the Second World War. She lived under surveillance in Shanghai and, um, you know, moved to Paris, to New York, and then to Malaya. And throughout all of that, she worked as an artist, you know, no matter what the circumstances, she was so committed to her practice. Um, so it's a really inspiring kind of story. And um, the consistency of her work really comes through the exhibition as well. We're talking with Russell Storer, the director, curatorial and collections for the Georgette Chen at Home in the World, the latest uh, exhibition uh, starting next week at the National Gallery here in Singapore. I have to correct myself. The the media presentation was yesterday, but the, yeah. <laughs> uh, the actual opening is next week. Russell, there are many things, not just paintings, involved in this exhibition. Take us through what else people will learn about her and see about her life when they come to see this exhibition. Yeah, so one of the really interesting aspects that the curatorial team um, uncovered was, you know, th- looking through archives and um, they traveled to China. They looked at the family archives as well as the Shanghai Library and really uncovered a lot of new material. The gallery also holds the um, Georgette Chen's personal archives. Mm-hmm. So from that, we're able to really uncover you know, new photographs, um, newspaper articles that she wrote about her artistic philosophy in China, letters. You know, she wrote a letter to Sun Yat-sen's wife, for example, looking for a job. You know, she was trying to move mm-hmm. from France back to China. She never got a response to, but then she got a job teaching in Penang. Huh. Um, and then letters... You you know, expressing her love for this new place that she found herself in, you know, the inspiration she found in the colours and the cultures of Malaya. And so, I mean, two years after moving to Penang, she moved to Singapore. So it really gives an insight into her personality, her life. I mean, there's great photos of her as a child with her family, but also just of her commitment to, to art. Based upon what you've seen of, uh, of these papers and wonderful research that you've done, how do you think Singaporeans viewed her work then and now? Has it changed? I mean, was she, you know, universally lauded from the beginning? I know Sunny Liu, the uh, comic book artist, we had him on our mm. show last week. He wrote a book about right. uh, Georgette Chen. I know he's a big fan himself. How was she viewed then and now? And has it changed at all? 
I mean, almost immediately moving to Singapore, she had a solo exhibition. And we have a group of works actually in the very, when you first walk in, of works from that exhibition. And it starts with this very compelling self-portrait. You know, she's looking right at you and you can really see the the um, steely but also, you know, the confidence and the passion in, in her. But she was an active you know, participant in the Singapore Art Society exhibitions. You know, she was exhibiting regularly. She made commissions. So she was almost immediately a part of the art scene. And obviously, as a teacher in the academy, she mm. was um, very connected. And being quite international, you know, very cosmopolitan person, she was able to make connections for her students. You know, she wrote them letters to study in Paris and so on. So I think she was pretty intrinsic to the scene pr- from the beginning. But of course, over time, Time, you know, the consistency of her work, um, you know, only built her reputation. And, you know, as we look back on that generation of artists, is really foundational to modern art in Singapore. She's really a central figure. Talking with Russell Storer, who is uh, the director of curatorial collections at the National Gallery in Singapore. Russell, when uh, families, of course, all the schools are out now, the local schools have been out uh, Mm. uh, this week and also a couple weeks ago for the secondary schools. But as families go, hopefully, to view this exhibition, uh, what should they what should they look at together? What should parents point out to the kids? What kind of Mm. experiences and and information should they uh, talk about and look at in this exhibit? So we have a range of programs. I mean, as with all our exhibitions, we have a really extensive series of free programs for our audiences. We've also developed a multilingual audio tour, Mm. you know, in all the four languages, so making it very accessible. We have education station in the centre of the exhibition where people can learn how to, you know, portraiture and, you know, exercises in composition and colour with our team. And downstairs, we also have, as part of our Small Big Dreamers Children's Festival, Mm. we have a major installation, a big immersive installation called An Artist Tropical Landscape. So you can enter a tropical fruit (laughs) and there's a lot of activities in there as well. So there's different access points and different ways to learn about her work, as well as, you know, learning, I guess, how to work in the key genres that she worked in, which was still life and, and portraiture. Yeah. Russell, I go to many schools in, in Singapore, and one of the questions I get asked most is about the arts broadly, whether it's visual arts or literary arts and so on. And is it something that children should have an interest in, pursue as a career, do as a hobby, and so on and so on? What would you say to those children, and maybe their parents, uh, about not only going to this exhibition, but why it's important for children to see the works mm. of the likes of Georgette Chen? I mean... Art is a way to see the world from someone else's eyes, you know, and it gives you another perspective on the richness of of life as it is. Um, you know, we live in a very multicultural place here in Singapore. You know, there's there's so many perspectives, so many experiences, and art is the best way to really enter that and just to really inspire one's own creativity. I mean, for any child, of course, it's essential to be creative and to explore and play, and art is also about play as well. So I think if you want to really embrace the world in all its richness and all its diversity, I think art is, you know, essential. <laughs> I mean, I'm biased, but no, you know, I, 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 yeah. I, yes, clearly you are. Yeah. <laughs> the, the name, is, the clue is literally in your title. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know, as a child, you know, I lived in a very remote country town in Western Australia, and and art gave me a window onto the world that I of couldn't course. access. You know, and it was it was always been so profound you know, in, in being in the world. I think it's the best way to, to see things in, in all of its beauty and, and variety. Absolutely. So tell us then, for the benefit of all families, the where's, the when's, when does it st- start, when is it on, when should they come and so on? When are the best yep. times and what would you recommend? Yes, yeah, so the exhibition opens next Friday, the 27th. It'll run through till September 26th next year. So you've got a lot of time. The gallery opening hours are 10 till 7 and the exhibition's in our city hall wing on level 4. So it's in two galleries, so it's across two two spaces, and it's free. And, yeah, I think, I mean, we have social distancing, of course. We have all of our precautions. So during the day, during the week, obviously, is the perhaps the easiest. But, you know, we have a pretty steady... Um, flow throughout the throughout the week. And Russell, people do not have to pre-book, do they? They don't have to reserve a slot, do they, to come in? No, no. 
Yeah, so they can just go anytime. So, all right. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Great. It's free as fantastic. well. It's magnificent. Yeah, that's always the best, isn't it? My favorite color, mm. free. Well, okay. <laughs> well <laughs> free, for, and free for Singaporeans and PRs. Yeah. Which is pretty much the only people in Singapore at the moment. That's right. So, so get down there and watch one of Singapore's masters. And, and Russell, I'm going to put you a yes. little bit on the spot. We didn't talk about this in advance, but oh. what, else, what else around the, the National Gallery is interesting to look at right now? Is there anything else going on specifically uh, that would be fun for for families or for individuals to see yeah well the small big dreamers um exhibition and you know is on you know there's a number of installations um that were coming up and uh we have our permanent collection galleries which are constantly changing so we have um the southeast asia gallery and the singapore galleries which Mm -hmm. you know trace the history of art throughout the region um from the 19th century to the present um, we have a commission on our rooftop by Tao Fei, a Chinese, very well-known Chinese artist, which is a really sort of stunning piece. So there's a number of pro- – and, as, of course, we just have a number of um, – our cafes opened again, so you can sort of hang out, spend time, and, of course, all our restaurants and bars. So, yeah, plenty to do. Wonderful stuff. I'll be taking my daughter to this. Yeah, I well, genuinely, genuinely want her to see this yeah, exhibition. No, I'm definitely taking my family as well. So, Russell, thank you very much. Russell Story, Director of Curatorial and Collections at the National Gallery. The new Georgette Chen uh, exhibition starting on the 27th, running through next year. So plenty of time to go see. Thanks for coming on this morning, Russell. We appreciate it. Thank you so much.